So, uh, how's that dandelion mead taste? Let's find out. We have a special guest. You might have noticed the guy on the end there. This would be Derica's brother. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's Colby. This is Terry, her father. And um, he comes over and spends, like, what, three weeks with us at a time and hangs out and trims bushes in the backyard and builds stuff and... I only hope that in five years I can be in half the good... No. I only hope that when I'm his age, I can be in half the shape that he's in right now. Anyway, so we're going to be drinking uh, dandelion mead. Are you ready? It's time for the pour. So, before we taste this, let's talk about it a little bit, shall we? We started this on October 18th of 2020, and today is January 21st of 2021. So that makes it about like three and a half months or so. So it's still considered very young, all right? Um, it also ended at a 1.036 gravity, but it started with a 1.160 something. It was up there. It's 17% alcohol using D47 yeast. Which is a little bit perplexing and shocking to me because D47 isn't supposed to go past 15, and in our experience, it usually doesn't. But it did. Maybe dandelions are superfood for yeast. I don't know. But um, we're going to go through our usual rigmarole here. And the first, we're going to talk about the clarity, or lack thereof. Now, as I stated in the finishing video for Dandelion Mead, it is slightly hazy and it ain't clear my <laughs> hypothesis is that the correct theory term? hypothesis her my, idea my my concept concept mm, Ooh. was that we used yeast holes in this and in some other brews that we used yeast holes and we noticed a slight clarity issue this is more than slight this is kind of hazy yeah. i mean it's not like chunky like no, it, no, no, no. You, you couldn't stick a spoon in there and have it stand up but it, it's got a definite haze i mean i can just see my finger through the other side it's not it's not clear okay am i bothered by this no no because it doesn't change anything for me it really doesn't and if somebody that i serve this to said ew it's hazy i'd take it back and drink it myself you want to say it don't you hey it's hazy <laughs> He didn't say ooh, he said hey, so oh, he's still, okay. he gets to keep it. All right. <laughs> you know what I mean. But, uh, yeah, it's a little cloudy, and I, it really doesn't bother me. It's it's as clear as it's going to get. That's why we took a while to get to this one. I wanted it to clear, and it never really did. But uh, on the smell, by the way, I like to use these Glen Cairns for this because it has the tulip shape, and see the swirl thing that I do? See the swirl thing it that he does? Funnels, it funnels the aromas. It, yeah, see, we, right we, we, we get a wobble. We don't get the cool swirl. Brian has, has the... That is years of whiskey right there. <laughs> That's what that is. If, if I <laughs> attempted that aggressive, I would just... There'd be mead everywhere. Watch. It would... Ah, oh, mm. two-handed. Aren't you fancy? <laughs> this makes me want to inhale. Yeah. You should. <sighs> Try to do it with your mouth open, if you can. I actually smell a f very floral, very flowery, like yeah. wildflowers, yeah. Um, not just dandelion, just wildflowers in general. Now, that could be the goldenrod and the dandelion in this. Yes, yes. Because it... remember, this was goldenrod mead, dandelion mead, a little bit of orange zest, and dandelion petals. Now, in one of the videos, I talked about the color, which we briefly skipped over, and it's a the golden color is like dandelions now. <laughs> color, but there's like an ever so slight tinge of green, making it more a golden with some brown notes rather than a bright citrus yeah. yellow. Is anybody else getting a little bit of a spice off of it? Almost a cinnamon? Almost. 
Not quite, Not but quite. almost a cinnamon, like a bit cross between cinnamon and clove, even. Yeah, when I breathe in with my mouth open, I get that little little bit of a spice to it. That's pretty that interesting I because there's nothing spice. in this that should give that. But anyways, I was saying about the color, and I had said that perhaps it was because there's chlorophyll in the dandelions, and then. I was like, oh, man, you went and said that, and you didn't research it ahead of time. And every time you say something and you don't research it, then somebody's going to tell you, you're wrong. Well, guess what? I researched it. And guess what? There's chlorophyll and dandelions. <laughs> but there's also the tons of good stuff. Oh, yeah. They're, like, really good for you. Yeah. There's tons of good stuff in dandelions. And Which so we don't know that any of that carries over once it ferments. Yeah, yeah. Because there's lots of vitamins and stuff, and we don't know what's the viability of... Is so just assume... Yeah, yeah. Just assume that most of it's gone. Yes. <laughs> but if you eat dandelions before fermenting them, like in a nice dandelion salad, you get all the good nutrient benefits. That's assuming you can actually grow them. Yeah. We can't. We're yeah, in Florida. They don't grow here. here. We tried. <laughs> um... All right, short sip. That's when you just, you know, over the lips and through the gums, look out, tummy, here it comes. Basically just swallow. And the reason why we do this is to acclimate our palate. And give a first impression. Not only to the strength of alcohol, which we had mentioned, this is 17%, but also to any sharp notes that may be a jolt to the system. Yeah. So that way when we taste it on our long sip afterwards, we can experience all the different notes that are inherent in the beverage. My first impression, though, is I sense the alcohol, but it's not overpowering. 17% should yeah. be much stronger mm -hmm. alcohol than that. I get a little bit of a bitterness from the middle to the end, not really on the entrance. The entrance is floral sweet, almost honey, yeah. like very honey-like, but yeah. not quite honey. I'm actually getting more like a flower water, um, but it's, it's viscous, it's thick. It doesn't have the overpowering sweetness that you would expect a 1.036 to have. It, and I think the alcohol is helping with that. For me, and I don't know if you're getting this as well, I'm getting kind of a herbal grassy note that I feel that's is... That's probably what's balancing the sweetness for me. It, but I feel that that's masking any of that alcohol punch. Yeah, that might be the bitterness I'm talking yeah, about. It's kind of I, a grassy... Yeah, yeah, yeah I, had a, I agree with that. What do you think? I, I wouldn't quite use the word bitter. Okay. I, did you say almost bitter? Almost. Yeah. <laughs> I like to say bitter. almost a lot. <laughs> almost approximate. It's, it's, it's not overly sweet and not overly bitter. Right. Yeah. It's it's actually nicely balanced. Yeah. That's what it is. Um, because when, when you, you do have something that has a higher gravity, that has more sugar in it, you want it to be balanced with something else in there. And I think that earthy, grassy note really balanced out the extra bit of sweetness that was left. That was not intentional, by the way. Remember, this one did a weird thing with the gravity. I'm thinking I actually added an extra pound of honey and didn't realize it. I think the little thing was more Yeah, because we didn't weigh the small vessel. We were just like, oh, yeah, that's a pound dump. And that is how you re how you recover from stuff like that on <laughs> camera live, because I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> just went with it. All right, but anyway. So I went ahead sip. and did my long sip, and for me... The very first thing I'm sensing is honey, mm -hmm. but then that very nicely melds into a lovely bouquet of floral notes, and then oh, yeah. I'm getting the herb notes. I'm not getting the spice so much, no. but oh, the, the, very the, end. the very end, yeah, that's what I was getting to say. There's like that tingly mm -hmm. spice. Like a clovey all it's spice. It's more of a sensation, a feeling, yeah. than a flavor. What you got, Dad? A feeling. I got the feeling. You got the feeling? <laughs> now, it could be the feeling of alcohol. Yeah. Although, we haven't... I mean, this isn't enough I, to really I know. I'm being silly. But... He drinks more when he comes here. <laughs> now, for me, it was a different experience on the long sip than the short sip. Mm -hmm. Very different. The short sip was a little more harsh and aggressive. Not that this is harsh or aggressive, but it was a little more on the long sip going into my mouth it was pure honey nicely sweet without overly sweet like you had the honey flavor but it wasn't super sticky sweet turned into flowers just like derica said and then i got a little bit of astringency on the back end and that's that 
I want to call it spice in a grassy note, and that balanced it out. It rounded out really nice. The finish is actually quite long. It stays with you for a while. This is far more complex than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is really nice. Now, would would you mm. actually? Let's just do it this way. Would you cook with this? And if so, what would you cook it with? Or what would you like me to cook it with? <laughs> I would rather drink it than cook it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is. I think this is a drinker more than a cooker. With food, I think this would be outstanding. You could have this with anything that has lemon flavors in it, like a lemon chicken or a, a pasta sauce with lemon in it. This would go really nicely, I think. I think it would be great with a salad or like a springtime vegetable medley type thing. Something with vinegar in it, too. It would be good. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Like a salad dressing with vinegar. Yeah. Um, but this is just really good. I could foresee putting this into, you know, various sauces and stuff like that. It would, it works. It's, it's got its own distinct flavor, but it's a more neutral floral flavor. It's not a specific thing that like really limits. It's, it's actually really reminiscent of a traditional mead to me with just a little bit of floral flavor added. Yeah. That's kind of what I get from it, which is probably why I like it. <laughs> now I'm trying to recollect if I've ever had dandelion tea before i did but sure, it was a long time ago i'm sure it was I, before i, I cared drank about such a lot of tea i'm sure at least one of them had dandelion in it but i i'm trying to think because we did some interesting things with our honey combination in this paired with the dandelion i'm wondering if the honey and i, I believe it to be true but i, I think the honey actually added to the floral oh, yeah essence of this beverage oh, yeah. uh, boosting the the dandelion even more well what we were told about the dandelion honey is that some people didn't like it it was too earthy and too bitter for them and i'm getting those notes in this so is that from the dandelion honey or is it from the dandelion itself and that's something that we don't actually know because yeah. neither of us really has experience with just plain old dandelion that way have you had any dandelion stuff that you can recollect i uh, don't remember of course, there's a lot of things I don't remember now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, would I put this in a mug and drink it? Yep. Absolutely. <clears throat> now, keep in mind, we are doing this at room temperature because that's when you get the most of the flavors out of it. Um, chilling this would just turn stuff off. A lot of people have been asking, oh, can you do it at cold and do it at hot? No. <laughs> We're going to keep it simple. <laughs> We're going to do it at one temperature because that is the best temperature to get the most out of it. Now, that doesn't mean it's the best temperature to enjoy it at. If you want to explore a beverage like whiskey, wine, things like that, you want to do it at pretty much room temperature because that's where the flavors are pumped up to their maximum. I actually encourage you to try a beverage in a multitude of ways. Oh, sure. Uh, do little samples. You could have a little personal sampling party and have some chilled, have some room temp, whatever you can think of. Right. But for a Over tasting for us, we find <laughs> doing it at room temperature keeps our videos below an hour and lets us get the most of the experience and relay that to you. Now, how you want to do it is totally up to you. And like she said, you know, put an ice ball in it, drink it cold, drink it warm, mull it if you want to, you know, heat it up, throw it in a toddy, whatever you want to do. It's all good because there's really no wrong way to do it. Yeah. We just find that for tastings, this is probably the most efficient way. Um, guess what time it is? We have to come up with a number. A number? Yep, a number yeah. 1 through 10. And here's our scoring system. Here's the way it works. 1 through 10, we do allow half points. But here's the way it works. A 1 means you probably wouldn't serve this to your worst enemy, and it might even be dangerous to drink. A 10 means there's no way to improve it without completely altering the recipe to be unrecognizable as it is <laughs> right now. Five is the midway point, and that means, yeah, it's good. Five means good stuff. I'd drink it, you know. Don't love it, but I'd drink it if it was there. I wouldn't refuse it. So, have we got a number? Not yet. I'm still thinking. I have a number. I need a little more. I'm going to check out my number here. 
For those of you wondering, yes, I am being careful with how much alcohol I drink now. That's why I was hesitant to go back for more, but I want to be sure. Um, and this is nice. I like it. Hmm. This is a tough one. Okay. All right. We all ready? I think so. Ready. On three. One, two, three, Seven. nine. Nine. Whoa. I need to explain my number. Okay. Go for it. We, we, we encourage that. The quick sip was fine. Mm -hmm. The slow sip was better. Yeah, I agree. But I didn't stop there. <laughs> Neither did I. Super slow, super slow sip. It goes in the mouth and then make sure it goes everywhere in your mouth. Yep. And it felt good everywhere on every tooth, all sides of the tongue. Mm -hmm. and That's a test I, of... I can't remember bit, having or... one that I could cool. enjoy that much. All right. Cool. That, I think that's a really excellent explanation yeah. of why you give it that number. So why'd you give it a seven? I gave it a seven because it evokes so many wonderful visual memories for me. Like sitting, laying in a field of flowers and looking at the, the clouds and trying to figure out what critter each cloud is. And so that leads me to summer or spring and it's going to be hot. And so my mind does weird things that way. So I want it to be sparkling and I want it to be cold, but I oh, don't know I see. if it being sparkling and cold is going to turn down those notes that I'm enjoying in it too much, so I'm conflicted. It may. I would advise against doing it cold because you might not want to keep it in your mouth for the super long sip. Oh, yeah. yeah. You yeah. might just drink it rather than enjoy it. Now, I gave Fair it enough. a nine for a lot of the same reasons that Terry gave it a nine. Mostly because I looked at it and I said, okay, what could I improve? The one thing I think is it could be a little less sweet. I, I would like this, a I mean, like maybe six, eight points. This was down into the 1.025 range. I think this would be much better. Um, needless to say, I could also drink more of it because it'd have less sugar in it. But I think this would taste a little bit better. I'm afraid it might bring out more of those earthy notes. So it's kind of a hesitant thing on that. But I think that would improve it. I would also like to see maybe half dandelion, half goldenrod honey. I think that would make this even better. Because I think there's a complexity coming from that goldenrod that we weren't getting with just the dandelion on its own. I think that would improve it. I want some goldenrod. You still have some? We do. I think so. Just the honey? Okay. Yep. Next, next time I'm going to try it's, that. It's over here somewhere. <laughs> We have tons of honey now. We have lots and People lots People have sent us of lots honey. of honey recently, and we're trying to get through it all to make videos of it. So please don't feel bad if we haven't gotten to your honey yet. We will. Or your product, or yeah. your oak chip, or... Yeah. We, we have you on tap. Trust us. It's just we haven't got there yet. So I would, mm. I would drink this. I mean, I, well, I'm very happy yeah. with this. Yeah, I mean, no, well, this is good. There's some that we make that I go, I don't know if I'm going to really drink that. But, um, but hey, if you like this video, look up. There's another one. You might like that one too.